Welcome guys, I'm Coach Bruno. Today I will show you how beat University of Florida. To beat University of Florida, the first things we need is the accurate, efficient, professional game plan. Offense tendencies, rotation per rotation, setter habit, setter body form, middle blocker habit, the block system defense tendencies, all the headers tendencies, the server tendencies as well, where we should serve to be accurate and cause maximum problem, rotation per rotation, where we should tip the ball, what kind of block defense strategy we will use against each headers. We will see everything in this video. Let's go. Okay, so they run a 5-1. The setter, number 21. Middle blocker, 24 and 99. Outside header, number 20, number 3. Opposite header, number 13. And the libero, the 23. High scout, over 335. In system situation, rotation per rotation, to extract, best as I can, all the setter tendencies. In rotation 1, we have 26% with the outside header, 23% with the middle header, 46% with the right side, and 5% for the pipe. So our priority will be clearly the right side, the number 20. In rotation 2, I let you check the percentage by yourself. Our block priority will still be the right side, but with the number 13. In rotation 3, the setter love play with her middle header, the number 24. In rotation 4, we should pay attention with the setter dump, 14%. And we will leave the back row header alone. In rotation 5, our priority will be the middle header, the number 24. This is the huge tendency with 49%. And the last rotation, rotation 6, we will be focused on the outside, the number 20. It will be crucial to help my middle blocker taking the right block option, rotation per rotation. Let's take a look about all headers tendencies. To have a perfect vision of each header tendencies, I use this video structure. I scout every heading action of the player and classify with different color the type of swing. Red for the back row attack, black for the front row attack, blue for the rolling ball or tip, and yellow for the block out attack. As you can see, action after action, we accurately made a efficient map tendencies. And we will have a better idea how to well-oriented our block defense system. Let's go faster and jump in the final conclusion. I use this process to compile all the header trajectory, the rolling ball, the tipping ball, and block out as well. When I'm done with this process, I can finally extract all the tendencies headers. It will give me a better vision to understand how I can set up a perfect block defense strategy against each headers. Okay, the number 13. First things, I extract her tendencies. And from this, I set up my block defense system. I chose to block line. My off blocker cover the tip. The right back defender dig the angle attack. My middle back defender switch left. And my left back stay on her regular second base. Same things here with the number 20. I extract all her tendencies and set up my strategy block defense. And I repeat that for all the players.
By my opinion, the number three, she is the best hitter of the team. For this reason, I will have a special treatment for her. What I mean by a special treatment, it's set up two different block system options. I won't be able to switch during the game if my first option is not efficient. You should set up more that one strategy against really good hitters. As you can see, the number three, she is able to swing everywhere. This is my first option with block line and this my second option with block cross. So what about the setter body form and her habit? I like improving my middle blocker ability to read the opponent setters. The setter body form change with her set intention. It's not easy to read that in the live game, but it's always good to have it in your pocket. But it's not only about reading the setter, it's also be able to know and remember what the setter is capable to do in different situations. As you understood by yourself, the setter will never be able to set the right side when she is in this situation. But she is able to use both options, right side and outside, only on this situation. And it's also about how she likes play with the middle blocker in what situation she is most likely will play with her middle hitters. She loves play with her middle hitter when she has a tie ball, but it's not the surprise. Many setters do that. It's the most easier set you can do on this situation. It's also important to know what is the maximum distance from the net where she is able to play with her middle hitters. This is the maximum distance where she is able to set her middle. I also observed different moves, different priority from the middle blocker. Sometimes they will follow the opponent middle hitters and sometimes not. Most of the time, the middle blocker will be not be able to block the pipe because they love anticipate their block with the opponent outside hitters. And they almost never follow or be able to block the slide. Like I say, they have this bad habit to anticipate their blocking move with the opponent outside hitters. Sometimes they will follow the opponent middle header like that. Same right here. And sometimes they will not follow. Same here. That proves they use an accurate game plan. They use a strategy. That's normal. It's what I need to be extremely focused during the game and quickly see what kind of priority block they use against me. Concerned their block system defense, many things keep my intention. First things, let's watch the block defense strategy they use against the opponent's middle hitters. 
the middle back defender shift right and the middle blocker block this area. Zone 1 and 5 will be always open to swing. Always. They use all the time the same system against the opponent's middle headers. Plus, you can observe the right front blocker will never try to help their middle blocker. And let's look the block system defense using against the pin headers. Their middle back defender use three different positions. Here she shifts left, right there she shifts right, and here she stay middle. exact same things when the right side header swing the ball. Middle back right, middle back middle, and middle back left. But I'm not really worried about where the player will be in defense. My main concern is the block, to find the open zone in the block. And what I know for sure, after watching at least 10 games, they are not really accurate by blocking the line. Let's watch. I was really surprised, but this is the fact. They never block line. Never. And it doesn't matter if the opponent swing the line. I guess the libero, she is pretty good but she's still human and she cannot dig all the ball. Other important aspect is how the setter block. She has this huge tendency to spin and let her side arm surface really vulnerable. And I can tell you, I will use it for sure every single time she is front row. I will talk a little bit about where we can tip the ball because there is some spot we should never tip the ball. The off blocker will always cover the tip. For example, here the number 13. Right there. Same thing here. The libero read pretty well the tip and she is fast enough to dig or touching 90% of the tip. Tipping behind the block is really not recommended. So like I said, the off blocker and the libero will always be able to dig or touching the tip just behind the block. This is the area where we should tip the ball. And we do have the same cover tip system when the outside opponent either swing the ball.
where we should serve to be accurate and cause maximum problem rotation per rotation in rotation one we have three passers and four seams our target will be for sure around the number three she have the lowest passing statistic performance but we need to be smart the libero try to cover her most as she can by shifting left and reduce the seam three by making that she opened the sim 2. This is the great opportunity for us to also target the sim 2. Rotation 2. The libero shift completely left to cover the player number 3 again. Sim 2 will be a great option and of course right on the number 3. Not like that. Rotation 3. This is the same process. The libero cover the number 3. Rotation 4, same philosophy again. They shift left to let a bigger passing area for the libero. Sim 3, 4 or 1 can be interesting to try. Rotation 5, libero protect the number 3. We can easily attack the sim 4 and 3 or target the number 3. Like that. And for finish, rotation 6, sim 4, 3 and one. We also can use a short serve. It can easily surprise them. Watch by yourself. I use the same process to scout all the service tendencies players. The number 13, her tendencies is zone one. The number 20, can serve everywhere. By my opinion, she did not have a special tendencies. The number three, she have this tendency to serve all the way straight from her starting serve spot. The number 21, she clearly target the outside hitters. The libero, she also target the outside hitters and she is able to target zone one. And for finish, the number 8 target the outside hitters and zone 6. It's really helpful to well oriented my passers. There is many many other things we can use to scout the team and extract tendencies. For example, we can also talk about the setter tendencies after defense. And you can also observe how the hitter will swing the ball after get blocked or after make a mistake. Same thing concerned the setter. Did she like set the ball again after her hitter get blocked or make an error? Or what's happened when the hitter is off speed? She like tip the ball, she keep going to swing? Like I say, there is ton of things you can implement in your game plan. But more and more you try to extract all the tendencies, it's so much work. But when you have passion, that's fine. I do believe an efficient game plan can make a huge difference between losing the game or winning the game. Guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. Thank you so much and I catch you in the next one.